Hi class, this is a short clip about doing digital lettering. I apologize about the audio quality. Uh, I was having issues with that. Uh, let's try to clean up a little bit, but there's a humming. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, there will be more videos about analog lettering and other methods to come. Okay, so I wanted to record a short video explaining how I use Photoshop to do lettering. I actually do it in a couple of ways though. So first one I'm gonna make is just about a pure digital lettering method. Um, I'm doing this on my comic Dracula Son of the Dragon with Mark Sable and for that comic I wanted kind of to reference the old EC comics so I picked a font that was uh, a bit chunky and kind of reminded me of what I remember seeing when I read those in the 70s so I'm just gonna re-letter this panel this balloon just to show you how I made these um, and you can see here over in the layers that I have all the text each one is a separate text element so and then each one on, on paragraph, you'll see I have the text centered, which there are maybe a few situations where you might do something else, but for most word balloons, you'll want your text centered. As you can see, I have my layer here for balloons. Turn that off. So I'd have my script as a text file open and I'd copy the proofed text in to the space here and format it onto the paragraph and pick my font. And I also would probably get into doing some things like kerning and letting, but I'm going to wait until after I create my balloon to get all that done. So then you just loosely select the area real quick. It doesn't have to be nice. And uh, we want to be on just this layer. And we're going to use the, the Alt button to deselect the area around the text. So we're just selecting the text. Then I go to under Selection, Modify, Expand. See that? Selection, Modify, Expand. And for these balloons, it varies. And it depends on the resolution you're working at and uh, other details. I'm going to experiment a bit uh, the first time you're doing it on a book to figure out what works. But for this one, I'm going to expand 60 pixels. And you can see already we have like a chunky balloon shape. So then I go to Smooth, and I use 60 again. I'll sometimes do this twice, but it's often not necessary. Right away, you can see that we've now got, we'll disappear our art for a minute so we can see it clear, perfectly smoothed out word balloon shape. And it's just nicely proportionate. You can go into transform selection and tweak it a bit. So I was finding that other balloon a little bit too tall. Uh, and you can do that there. And then I would have a, a layer called balloons, which I already have now, but I wanted to create a new one. So we're going to call it balloons demo. And it's just on normal, mode normal. And quite straightforward, just fill some white in there. Now that should be behind the text, so you can see your text. There you go. And you have at least the main big part of the balloon done. So now we need our art. There are a couple ways you can make your tail. You could try to just draw it. Use the eraser to hone the tip. Change my eraser settings a bit, they're a little too sensitive. So you can draw it. You could also use the lasso tool to do it that way and do a fill. I do that sometimes. Either way it works. Uh, so now that you have your balloon shape, you select. Now select modify again, expand. And for this, I'm going to say four pixels. Again, this varies depending on, Marilyn's rate may vary depending on what you want look like. And it gives a rounded end there, so I always use the lasso to trace in a nice point to my tail. I go back to paint bucket, I give it black, and I make it set to behind so that it will not fill in the white by accident. So yeah, I can even do that. It helps clean up the edge. And there is my balloon, more or less. Um, it's got a nice crisp 
edge. Now, I mentioned liking, liking Liquify. I just select the area to control what I get in my selection. I'm going to pull up Liquify. Let's shrink that down so it fits in our window. And I want to tweak it a little bit. You could also, by doing this, you can induce a bit of thick and thin variation in the line, I've noticed, which is something I like about an inked line that can be kind of achieved here. Let's see how that's going. That's good. I like this. So that's how I make a word balloon. Now, I mentioned kerning and spacing. In Comic Commando, spacing is okay, but it's not great. So generally, I'm going to bring my, my words together using that, letting control. Is it 80? Is it both 80? I think it's 60, but I feel like that one is closer because of the comma. So, and then this F, that is some bad. Uh, uh, kerning right there, that F and that A. So we go to metrics. There we go, that's looking better. Everything else is pretty good, so that's not too bad. We can actually probably use a little more space there. And there you go. Now the font's a bit small because he's sort of speaking under his breath a bit. See, that's a lot smaller. I'm not sure I'm going to keep that balloon, but I'm definitely going to be editing this balloon. Let's see what I can do with Liquify. Keep some of the expressive shape that I had, but that's much better. See? And I use the same tool to, do, to induce the warble here. I've got connecting tails to minimize on the number of tails pointing at the character. So he's got three major lines, chunks of lines here. This is a good uh, moment to point out eye line alignment. So eye line beginning here is very directly from Vlad's eye. And then I think the arc, in my mind, partially because of where Dad's looking, leads to the face here of his younger brother Radu, which is designed to do this. Yeah, we could venture up there, of course. And then we have that. More or less. No, I think really Vlad's looking that way, so you might go this way, but you've got a triangle of heads there people are going to focus on. Now, my lettering replacement relative to the eye line, you can see here, I don't put the balloons on the eye line. These ones are more directly colliding, and it's because I kind of want you to read a plague, blah, 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 down to you not know, animate the orders. I want to link those two. I want that to be the order you read them in, so I intentionally link them spatially. But in general, you'll notice that the eye line itself is mostly clear, and the balloons sort of hang off. I often think about it as like a clothesline. The text hangs off the eye line. So you, you find it en route, but it doesn't co interfere with the route. And I find that's a good rule of thumb for, for clean reading of your lettering. Uh, these tails are probably too long. I'm going to most likely shorten them. You don't need to reach that far, and it shouldn't collide with other objects on the table. So the way I see I'm touching the, the bottom, this was done in an earlier draft, and I don't think that, that was a very good call. So we're going to go back to liquefy. And just generally trim that up. That's much better. Ending in an open space, you can clearly see it pointing at the character who's talking, but not trying to actually reach them, which is always a mistake. Same here. It's 
got a bit of a zigzag to it, I feel like that expresses the rhetorical comment going on. Again, pointing at the subject, but not attempting to actually reach them, making sure it ends in a point where it's fairly clean reading. And often that is closer to the balloon than farther from it. So there you go. Here's some lettering tail tips. <laughs> <laughs>